Hey, what's up everyone? My name is HippoTC and in this video, I got some exclusive footage of the end game content for Skull and Bones. The devs were kind enough to kind of bring me in and kind of show me what the end game of Skull and Bones is. So one of the things was we had some very cool ships unlocked and each of these ships were broken down into three categories, DPS, support, and tanks. So we, of course, went with DPS because that is probably the most fun. But uh, I did check out the support later and I checked out the tank later too. So each of these ships kind of bring in their own unique thing. Once I selected my ship, of course, I named it Kevin. And I started to just kind of look at the customization options that you're going to have in Skull and Bones. Now, they had everything unlocked. So we got to explore a little bit on each of these. I want to show you kind of what those look like and I'll pick back up. When I'm on the other side of it, but there was definitely a lot of options to kind of select your boat. Now, even the armor was pretty neat and armor had different uh, kind of attributes to help facilitate against each of the fights. And one of the things that they showed us early on was Skull and Bones is going to have seasons and within each season, there's going to be unique gear to get to help you fight the boss or the pirate legend that you're going to go up against. So they kind of showed us what the first season is going to look like. And that's actually gonna be at the end of this video, that fight with that boss. So you're gonna to wanna to check that out. After getting our ship all set and customized the way that we liked it, I set sail into some areas within Skull and Bones that I had not yet been previously in other betas. So I got to see some really cool footage and I'm gonna show you some of that now. So just take a look at this. After waiting around, we finally saw one of the world events that we were going to go to first, which is called a hostile takeover. This is some of the end game content that you're going to be doing in Skull and Bones. The premise of this particular world event is you're going to go into this green circle and you can compete against other players. This is PVPVE. So anyone within this green circle, even if they are in your group, can be attacked. So the goal of this is, is to win this hostile takeover to get something that is called a manufacturing. Now, manufacturing is going to be something I'll explain a little bit later, but the whole premise of the end game within Skull and Bones is to get as many manufacturing plants or whatever you want to call them as possible to get the end game currency pieces of eight. So to do that, you have to win these hostile takeovers. So this is kind of what that looks like. You're going to fight PVP, uh, their ships, and you're going to fight PVE. At one point within our group, I asked the other guys if it would be okay if we kind of fought each other to see what that would look like and what that would feel like. And of course, they took it easy on me and I ended up winning. But here is 
the hostile takeover in Skull and Bones. After doing two back-to-back -back hostile takeovers, uh, again, they went super easy on me and I was able to win both of them, which just meant that now I could do two manufacturing places. Um, but yeah, these were pretty fun. I could see how these would be contested with other ships and you would be fighting for, fighting for your life a little bit to see if you can survive. 
Um, but yeah, pretty fun. I really like the hostile takeovers. I thought it was kind of cool. And the manufacturing, we'll get into a little bit later in the video. That's really what all of this is about, is creating your pirate empire to manufacture these pieces of eight. And one of the cool things with these is, and I'll explain it later when I show you the footage, uh, is when you go to collect your pieces of eight, you can actually uh, go double or nothing and double the amount that you get from these plants. So um, pretty, pretty cool overall. After that, there was a cutthroat cargo run, which we've seen in previous like betas. So essentially what this world event is like is you were going to get this cargo. Once you're flagged on the, the map, once you have the cargo, other players will be able to attack you. And your goal is to get it to a specific location and you'll get some pretty good loot from doing that. So this is what a uh, cutthroat cargo, cargo run looks like. You got to get the loot and then you got to scoot to wherever it tells you to go. Now, you're the only person that knows where it's going. So other players aren't going to be able to necessarily cut you off without them knowing as well. Um, but this is what that looked like. Now, another world event that we got to check out is something that is called a legendary heist. Now, these are PVE only, so they're co-op. And the goal here is to sink what is this like special merchant ship that has this really great loot and then take that loot to an outpost. And the whole time you're being attacked by PVE. Now, even with maxed out ships with the best ships in the game as of right now, this was actually pretty tough. We ended up sinking a few times, but the, the guy who had the cargo was able to get it to the outpost. And yeah, it was a lot of fun. These are called legendary heists. And the same thing with that we saw with uh, the, the hostile takeovers, if you do a legendary heist, it also produces a manufacturing for you as well, which is another way to get more pieces of eight.
Now, what are we doing all of these things for? Why, why are we doing hostile takeovers and why are, we, why are we doing legendary heists? Well, all of these produce what is called manufacturing and you wanna get the end game loot, which is pieces of eight and this is how you do that. So every time you complete one of these things, it, it allows you to get a manufacturing and then you can start getting pieces of eight and you can upgrade these things with silver. You can upgrade these things with pieces of eight. Uh, sorry, not silver. You need silver to fund it, but you need pieces of eight to upgrade it. And the more you get, the more currency you can get. And I'll show you a little bit later, like the special smugglers hideout um, and why you do all this. But this just gets you like the top tier loot, top tier equipment within uh, skull and bones. But once you upgrade it, you're going to have to come back to these plants and get the pieces that you actually have to go collect them they don't just come to you and this is where something kind of cool happens so when you go to collect your pieces of eight you're going to be offered a choice do you go double or nothing and if you sink you lose everything and whoever sank you gets to keep it or do you just take what you have and that's it call it done well in this particular case i wanted to see what it would look like going double or nothing so of course we went double or nothing and once you do that, you appear on the map for other players to come get you. Now, similar to the uh, the other voyage where no one knows where you have to go, that's still the case here, the cutthroat voyage. Um, but players can cut you off if they see you kind of going in a direction and can kind of plan out your route a little bit, um, they'll be able to run into you. And that's kind of what happened to me. I actually was almost there and another player ship uh, from another group that was playing in this particular play session, uh, they came to fight me. Uh, what was cool about this and was interesting as we were doing it, I was kind of talking to the, the, the guys a little bit, is if you do this within a group, you can actually protect each other while you're doing it. So you can kind of get a group uh, together, go double or nothing on these pieces of eight, and then all of you guys can make sure that you get to the location safely. Now, granted, your friends could betray you, but hey, it's a pirate game. If that happens, maybe you need maybe you need better friends. But again, this is the double or nothing pieces of eight. We ran into another player, and what we ended up doing was instead of just turning it in, us three, me and my my fellow people that were in my group, we all turned on this one ship that was trying to fight us, and uh, we ended up sinking them. And this is what that looks like.
So I have one more world event to show you, but I wanted to kind of show you why we're getting pieces of eight. So within the, the certain ports, you're going to have like a smuggler's hole or a smuggler's uh, area. And this is going to get you some of the best stuff uh, within the game. That's why you want to go for the pieces of eight. And as you can see here, it costs quite a bit of pieces of eight, even just some general cosmetics and things like that costs these pieces of eight, this special loot that you need. So that's why we're all kind of getting these manufacturing and kind of going for that. Um, and I kind of showcase all of the different things that you can get, which all look pretty cool. I love all the cosmetics within Skull and Bones. They did a great job making it look real piratey. So I like that a lot. That's a bargain not to be missed. Fair win, friend. Now we're going to leave this area and I want to show you kind of the smuggler's hideout and what that looks like. And this is kind of where you are going to rule your pirate empire. You're going to be able to see everything. And there's even some other things within here that we weren't able to explore too much um that you can kind of check out but this is the purpose of the game right here get to this end part in the game complete the story and this is the gameplay loop that you're going to be doing at the end of this game you're gonna you're gonna get your manufacturing you're gonna collect your pieces of eight and you're going to create your pirate empire and can kind of manage it all from right here
Now, one of the things they wanted to show us was they wanted to show us the big fight against the Sea Beast. We've seen this in the beta as well, so this wasn't necessarily something new for me, but I wanted to showcase that anyway. If you hadn't seen this yet, if you're watching this video for the first time, uh, I've never seen anything with Skull and Bones. This was one of the Sea Monster events, and honestly, this guy was a son of a gun. He was not easy to sink, and it took all of us to kind of go after him. So lots of fun. And again, what's cool about these fights is, yes, you can team up with other people or you can kind of keep it to your own group. Uh, some events are going to be PvPVE and then some events are going to be strictly PvE working with other people. This is a PvE event. Um, I think this is actually a bounty, I believe. I believe we had to pick up a bounty to go do this one. Uh, but yeah, ended up being a lot of fun and uh, I enjoyed it. It was pretty cool to see all of our boats out there. We had support ships healing us. We had the DPS and dropping the damage on them. And uh, it was it was a lot of fun. After the Sea Beast, we were running out of time on our play session, and they wanted to show us one last thing, and this was the Season 1 kind of boss fight that we are going to experience in the first season of Skull and Bones. This is the Tides of Terror. So we were went to the location on the map to fight this special boss, and one of the cool things that was shared with us was throughout this season, to fight this boss, you're going to be kind of unlocking special uh special gear that's going to help you kind of take him down uh we ended up try trying this twice the first time we weren't successful in doing the damage and then the second time we all kind of understood what needed to be done and we were actually able to pull it off so i want to show that to you in its entirety it's a lot of fun uh it was really cool just kind of fighting in a storm even and uh this is this is really good i like this i think it's a good combination of everything again this is all pve though so there's no pvp fighting we were all working together um we got a group together it was our group and another group of three that went to this tides of terror event and i think that's kind of where the social aspect of this game will come in is some events will probably need more 
uh, more people to complete. So this is the Tides of Terror world event fighting what uh, Skull and Bones, what Ubisoft wants you to know as is a pirate legend.
so there you go i hope you guys enjoyed watching this exclusive uh footage this exclusive video of skull and bones and kind of what the end game loop is going to be and some of the activities that you get to do for yourself i hope you enjoyed it thank you for watching if you haven't subscribed yet uh, please do so we're gonna have more skull and bones footage and gameplay and guides and all that thing all those things when this game comes out um i've been pretty much in the pirate game genre for a long time so i love pirate games and uh, always loved Assassin's Creed Black Flag. And so this is the, the ship naval combat of that. And I'm really looking forward to it. And I hope you are too.